Okay, guys. Lesson four one. As we start into chapter four, there's going to be maybe a geometry aspect to it, but this is full out trick. Is where we're going. Okay. Officially, our last chapter of conic sections was trig. Okay. I I mean, it falls under the trig umbrella, but I don't necessarily think of it as trig. Um, the trig we're doing here, we will start using the unit circle this chapter. Okay. So we will start learning all about that and just learning our trig. Um, what going into calculus, whether you take calculus next year. Whether you might take calculus in high or in college, you are in high school. In college, you know, trig is a necessary predecessor to calculus. Okay, so um, it's really hard to succeed in calculus if you haven't had some basic trig. So um, today's kind of an introduction, I'm looking at some conversions and whatnot. So just kind of our first dip into it. First definition up there we have is degree. You guys are probably most familiar with degrees, represented by the little degree symbol, right? So realize if in this chapter it has that little symbol after it, it's a degree, okay? Unit of angular measure equal to one one eightieth, one one eightieth of a straight angle. Meaning, what they're using to define what is a straight angle? Straight angle is a straight line, right? And what is a straight line equal to? 180 degrees, right? And so it's saying it's 1 one eightieth of that. Okay. First thing we do is we are talking about DMS. Degree, minute, second. Okay. Um, degree, minute, second system of angular measure. Each degree is divided into 60 minutes. And you'll notice it's denoted by like a single little apostrophe or mark, and then each minute is divided into 60 seconds, which is a double mark, kind of like a quote mark there. Okay, so minutes is one mark, seconds is the next mark. We're going to be working here with how to go back and forth. So if I say this is 37.425 degrees, well, it's 37 degrees and how many minutes and how many seconds? So Used more when you're thinking about like latitude and longitude, right? Okay. Sharpsville is at, or Tri-Central is at a certain degree. But to get specific, you go minutes and seconds into that degree. And that's what this will do for you. So, 37.425 degrees. If we're trying to convert this to degrees, minutes, and seconds, the first thing we know is that how many deg whole degrees do we have? We have 37 degrees. So the first part of my answer, without any work I know, is 37 degrees. Now, we currently have 0.425, so 425 thousandths of a degree, or 0.425. And we're trying to change that, first and foremost, to minutes. And notice what it says. Each degree is divided into 60 minutes. So, first thing we're going to do is to take this 0.425 degrees. Notice what it says. One degree is 60 minutes. What's that mean I have to do? Do what? Not divide by 60. Multiply by 60. You can think of it as... Dimensional analysis, how we convert units. You've done it in here. You've done it in chem, probably. But if you think in terms of fraction, this is 0.425 degrees over 1. And the connection that we had was 1 degree is 60 minutes. So I can either do 1 degree over 60 minutes or 60 minutes over 1 degree. How do I get degrees to cancel? 60 minutes over 1 degree. Does that make sense? Because then what's going to happen? The degree label can cancel. And so now the calculator tells us that 0.425 times 60 is 
25.5. And that officially would be 25.5 minutes right now. Okay. So the next part of my answer is, what do I have here? What's my whole number of minutes? 25. So at this point, I'm at 37 degrees, 25 minutes. And now I want to figure out how many seconds I'm at, which I get. Some of you are looking at just knowing this one. Do we know how many seconds that's going to be? 30 seconds because it's half a minute, right? Now, mathematically, I'm going to work it out because it won't always be that easy, right? We are left with 0.5 minutes, right? So we can set it up as a fraction as well. 0.5 minutes. And this time, we're trying to get minutes to seconds. What's the connection? We know one minute is 60 seconds. So if I want minutes to cancel, I can put it on bottom. So one minute to 60 seconds. And by doing that, my minutes cancel. And 0.5 times 60 is, as we expect, 30 seconds. So this answer becomes 37 degrees, 25 minutes, and 30 seconds. So the shortcut there is we took the decimal part, we multiplied by 60. That new whole number became my minutes. We took the next decimal part, multiplied it by 60 again. That whole number part becomes the 60. Questions on how I did that? Okay. Take me through the next one. It's 157.892 degrees, and we want to convert it to that degree minute second. So what do you know first? Okay. I know already in my answer, 157 degrees because of that right there. Now what? Excuse the interruption. All sixth graders and eighth graders going on the field trip meet outside the middle school office, please. Okay. So next part I'm going to do is I'm going to take the decimal here of 0.892. And that is 0.892 degrees. And what am I going to do with that? Multiply by 60 because we know one degree is 60 minutes. 0.892 times 60 is 53.52. And that officially is 53.52 minutes, right? So what's the next part of my answer? 53 minutes. Now, this is why I gave you the technique last time because you know how many seconds that is? Not quite as obvious this time, is it? So what do I do? Yeah. Take your remaining piece here, which is the 0 0.52 sec uh, minutes, and multiply by the 60 seconds. 0.52 times 60 is 31.2. And that's going to be 31.2 seconds. Final answer, 156 degrees, 53 minutes, and I'm going to put 31.2 seconds. You could probably also get away with saying 31 seconds. Okay. Okay, I'm ready to go the other way. If you're given degrees, minutes, seconds of so 42 degrees, 24 minutes, 36 seconds, how do I convert that to degrees? Huh? Divide. We're going the other way now, so we're going to divide. What do I already know about my answer? Okay, I know that my answer is 42 
point something, yes? What am I going to have to do with that 24 minutes? Take the 24 and divide by 60. Now, what about that 36 seconds? Well, if I do this, and I guess there's a couple different ways we could do this. We know we're going to have the 42 degrees initially, yes? To take 24 minutes and turn it to degrees, we're going to have to divide by 60. And that will become degrees. Plus, now, what about that 36 seconds? Are we just dividing by 60 there? Think about it. How did we get this 31.2 originally in the previous problem? We had to multiply by 60 <coughs> here and then multiply by 60 again, right? So what do we have to do to get out of seconds? Divide by 60 twice or what? Divide by 120. Not 120. It's not 60 plus 60. Or it's 60 squared or in other words 3600. So I'm going to take the 36 seconds and divide by, I'm going to say 3,600. If you would rather say 60 squared, you can. So what is 24 divided by 60? Point 0.4. What is 36 divided by 3,600? So if we have 42 degrees plus the 4 tenths plus the 1 hundredths, what am I at? 42.41 degrees. I did mine in individual pieces. Could you plug that all into your calculator at once? You can. Just make sure you set it up right. I would use fraction bars as opposed to just division. But you can plug it in just like that. Okay, same idea on the next one. What do you guys know? To start with, we're going to have 125 point something. So, we know it's 125 degrees, plus, what's the next part you have to do? The 56 minutes divided by 60. And what else do you have to do? The 35 seconds divided by 60 squared, or 3,600. Now, this one's a little harder to do the individual pieces. You still kind of need the calculator there probably. Because what is 56 divided by 60? 0.93 and the 3 is repeating. And you don't want to just round that to 0.93. That could affect your answer. What is 35 divided by 3600? 0.00972. Is it the 2 that's repeating? Okay. So this is 1. Or it would be better to do it as the calculator. What did I do? I don't have that answer written down in my notes from... You guys got an answer? Okay, 125.94. Let's see, does it give me... Yeah, I don't have any rounding directions. You'll have to watch in homework and see what the rounding directions are because I don't remember off the top of my head. So 0 0.9430556 is what my calculator says if I do the whole thing. Um, 
I'm going to say 125.943 degrees as my rounded answer. Again, I can't remember what the book says. Or maybe they'll just come out nicely in the book. I don't remember. Okay. So, being able to go back and forth there. Okay. Now, dipping into what we will work with all throughout this chapter and all throughout trig, you need to be able to convert back and forth between degrees and something called radians. Okay. Um, radians is a typical trig unit. Um, when we're first learning, we spend a lot of time going back and forth between degrees and radians, just kind of learning about them. Um, in calc, we rarely use degrees. It's almost always in radians, and that's just how trig works a lot there. So um, we'll be using radian measures of angle. Each degree is equivalent to pi over 180 radians. Okay, that pi over 180 is the conversion factor you need to remember. So, if we're going from degrees, so if you're given a degree bubble on the problem, to go from degrees to radians, we're going to multiply by pi over 180. Okay, radians is usually expressed in terms of pi. And so multiplying by pi over 180 there, we'll put that pi in the answer. If you're given radians, and if it's in radians form, there will be no labeling. There is no degree bubble. There's just no labeling. Okay. If it's in radians form, to go from radians to degrees, it's the reciprocal. So you're multiplying by 180 over pi. Or I like to try and think you're trying to take the pi out of the radians form. Okay? So look at A. How many degrees, excuse me, how many radians are in 90 degrees? I don't want a decimal, though. Good answer, but I don't want the decimal. What's the technique I'm going to do here? If we're trying to go two radians, what do I need to do? Multiply by pi over 180. Now, so it's 90 degrees times pi over 180. Most of the time, we are going to leave our answer, how I say it, is in terms of pi, meaning I want pi in the answer. Okay, Mallory said 1.57. That is equivalent to the correct answer. However, we're going to leave it in terms of pi, so we're going to leave it in fraction form. When I multiply this across as is, 90 times pi is 90 pi over 180. Now, of course, reduce as possible, which this one definitely should reduce. What do you know about 90 over 180? 90 over 180 is 1 half, and so how do I express this? pi over 2, okay? And that is pi over 2 radians. I don't necessarily have to label, but I'm going to throw it on there just to help you a little bit. Now, I told you guys I'm going to introduce the uh, unit circle. Look at the unit circle over there. Where is pi over 2? At the very top, yes? One thing I'm going to... We'll talk about this later, but that's what the idea is. Zero is right there. Okay? Zero is there on the right. Maybe not where you, you know. Okay? But does that make sense that pi over 2 is up top then? Yeah. Because pi over, because that's where 90 degrees would be, yes? Okay. So. Okay, let's try this another one. And this is one where looking at the unit circle isn't going to help me. How many radians are in 250 degrees? So there's some of these that it's typical to just, you can look at the unit circle and just kind of find it and know. This one, not so much. Same process though. That process, we're trying to get to radians. You take 250 degrees and do what? Multiply by pi over 180. Again, don't go decimal on me, okay? The pi is tacked onto the answer. Think about the fraction 250 over 180, which what can I do already? The zeros, are you guys okay if I say the zeros cancel? Because 
because you, you're dividing both by 10, right? Just a fraction trick. The zeros are going to cancel because you divide them both by 10. And so then what do I have? Yeah. 25 pi over 18. Does it reduce past that? No. 25 and 18 have nothing in common. So this is 25 pi over 18 radians. Okay, so now let's reverse this. And this is a typical question, or typical radian. How many degrees are in pi over 3 radians? Okay, so and if you look over there, pi over 3 is distinctly on there. Okay, but what are we going to do? If we're trying to go from radians to degrees, what do I multiply by this time? 180 over pi. Or again, if I'm trying to get out of radians, I'm trying to take the pi out, so I'm dividing the pi away. What happens? Pi's cancel. 180 over 3. What is 180 divided by 3? 60. So we have 60 degrees. If you look at the unit circle over there, is pi over 3 make sense if we say that's 60 degrees? Based on pi over 2 was 90, yes. Based on where I showed you the 0 was. D, how many degrees are in 5 pi over 18? Okay. Multiplying, taking 5 pi over 18. And multiply by 180 over pi. What kind of math can we do there? The pi's? Pi's can cancel. 18 and 180 can both divide by 18. 18 divided by 18 is 1. 180 divided by 18 is going to leave me with 10. So what do I have remaining? 5 times 10 is 50. Not a typical number you'll see on the unit circle. Okay. Um, next two, a little bit different. Okay. Um, Converting 25.5 degrees to radians. Same process in that if I'm trying to go to radians, what am I going to do? Okay, 25.5 times pi over 180. We're still going to try and keep it in terms of pi. Um, so we can go ahead and multiply here. If you multiply here, what do I have? Twenty five point five pi over one eighty. What do we not usually do? What's not okay with this answer? Yeah, we don't usually leave a decimal within a fraction, do we? Okay. Yeah, no, we're not going to. Ideas on how you can get that decimal out. Okay. Multiplying by 10 will move a decimal one position to the right, yes? So to get rid of that decimal on top, multiply by 10. What you do to the numerator, we do to the denominator. So if we multiply by 10 over 10, this is now 255 pi over 1,800. Okay. He knows we can divide by 5. I agree. 5 is a minimum. Can we divide by anything bigger than 5? I feel like we can maybe, but I didn't.
Sounds right. So it divides by 15, or in other words, it divides by 5 and 3. So we end up with 17 pi over 120. You guys know how to use your calculators to simplify a fraction. At least if you have this calculator, you can, I shouldn't show you this, but you can cheat. Now, not, notice I'm not going to put the pi in. If I type in fraction form 255 over 1800 and hit equals, it reduces it for me. You have to use the fraction bar. Just make a fraction. So, like, I use alpha F2 to get my fraction. You can also... Nope, sorry, it's not. Alpha F1, sorry. I don't know. I just use, I know my finger just goes there. I do alpha. Okay. I hit alpha and then X ton. Alpha and what? The XT button. Okay. Anyways, read in detail. I don't know if I should have shown you that or not, but it's helpful. It's helpful, yes. Now, keep in mind, do you always have a calculator access? No. AP Calc Test is half calculator, half non-calculator, so. Ah, uh, yeah. You must have had a Casio or something. Oh, it was probably... This one, yeah. The one that is banned on the Algebra 2 quiz today, along with a whole bunch of Casios. Because we're simplifying radicals, so I want to know that they can do it. Okay, converting 2.5 radians to degrees. What do I do? Okay, notice this is radians, and so to go to degrees... We're going to multiply by 180 over pi. Okay, this one, you can multiply if you want, and I debate which way to have you guys set this up. If you multiply across 2.5 times 180 is 450 over pi, which... That's not a typical degrees answer, okay? If you use the pi, that's more of a radians answer. Degrees are typically more just decimals. And so if I, you could go ahead on this one because we're going to degrees and convert it to a decimal. So 450 divided by pi ends up being 1.5. Okay, I have 143.24 degrees written down. Okay, and that's because it's a degrees answer. Okay, typical degrees answers, you don't want to put a pi in there. Um, probably the pi button. Honestly, I already had it written down. Because I already had it written down and I didn't actually. Um, above your exponent button. And it is slightly different. I would recommend using the pi button. So here's for comparison's sake. If I use the pi button, it's 143.2394488. If I use 3.14, 143.312. That 0.239 versus 0.312, that's enough to make a different answer. I would encourage the pi button. Okay. Other questions? Okay, turn the page. <laughs> turn the page. Okay. <laughs> okay. Central angle. A central angle is the angle made 
at the center of the circle. Okay, so if we think about a circle, here's my circle. Okay. <laughs> Are you critiquing my circle? <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a central angle is an angle that's made in the center of the circle, meaning it's starting at the center point and going out. Okay, that is what we're talking about, a central angle. Now, before I forget, you will often see when we talk about angles in trig that we will use theta. For angles. Are you guys familiar with theta? Okay. Theta is your typical angle mark. It is it's a Greek, the Greek letter theta. Okay. The Greek letter theta. And so it's a circle with a line through it. And yeah, mine didn't come out too great, did it? So that's... <laughs> okay. So the central angle we're talking about is like this angle right here. So an angle just stemming from the center of the circle. Now, we are going to learn the arc length formula. And the arc length formula allows us to find the arc length. And in the formula, arc length is S. The arc length is the length of the curved partition of the circle. Meaning, when we're talking about arc length, like if I'm trying to find arc length, I'm trying to find the distance <coughs> on the circle from one side of the angle to the other side of that central angle. And so what I just traced there in blue would be S. That would be a representation of an arc length. Okay, it's that <coughs> curved partition of the circle on a central angle, theta being the angle. Arc length formula. Our arc length formula, S equals R theta, okay? S equals R theta. S is arc length, the length of the curved partition. R, as always when dealing with circles, is the radius. And theta is the angle, notice what it says, in radian form. So not degree form, but in radian form. Okay? Our example to use the arc length formula. Find the perimeter of a 60 degree slice of a large seven inch radius pizza. Arc length formula is gonna do this. So what's the question asking me? Perimeter, yes? Perimeter? of a 60 degree slice of a large seven inch radius pizza. So, there's my pizza. What are we finding the perimeter of? That's my circle representing the pizza. You guys are cool today, man. Okay. A 60 degree, there's my 60 degree slice of pizza, and it's, this pizza has a 7 inch radius, so how does that apply? Yeah, 7 inches and 7 inches. Now, we want the perimeter of this slice of pizza. So what do I not know? Okay, yeah. On this slice of pizza, I know one straight side, one straight side. What I don't know is my curved side. Or in other words, I don't know S. So how can I find S? Okay, so the formula we're going to use 
to find that length of that curved piece is S equals R theta, right? What's R? What's R? <laughs> it's a rough crowd here today. R is what? Okay. R is seven. What's theta? They didn't give me pi over three. Okay. And technically it's one we already converted earlier. Here's the deal, guys. They tell me 60 degrees, but that's degrees. What did they want this in? Radian form. So you need to take a moment and convert 60 degrees to radians. How do we multiply to get degrees to radians? You multiply by pi over 180. 60 times pi over 180 is pi over 3. So we're going to use pi over 3 because they told me to put it in radian form. So what is 7 times pi over 3? <coughs> Seven pi over three. Now, I'll be honest, I'm gonna go the decimal route on this one because they're asking for the perimeter of the pizza. What is seven pi over three as a decimal? Excuse me. What is it? Seven point three? Seven point three. Now Am I done? Is that what they wanted? No. no. They want the perimeter of what? Of that slice of pizza. So how do I find that perimeter of that slice of pizza? We need the 7.3 along with the 7 and 7. So 7 plus 7 plus 7.3, which is 21.3 what? Inches. Okay. That's going to have to be a stopping point. I really wanted to get this lesson done today. However, it's not happening. Um, I would say start your homework. I'm going to have to rethink and decide how I want to proceed this week because I had only allowed today for this lesson. This homework will not be due tomorrow. However, I might also do, I have to look and see, I might do part of the next lesson tomorrow too. Okay, but this homework will not be fully due because I will have not fully taught everything. However, I will, I've taught most of it, honestly. So it would be in your best interest to go ahead and get it done, even if I don't grade it tomorrow. Does that make sense? <laughs> and fair warning, I may teach something else tomorrow, so besides this stuff.